man. What up? So, uh, I heard uh, that you're gonna start selling anemones soon online. Oh, yeah? What is up, coral people? If you are new here, my name is Remy, and this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. The easiest way to support this channel is to like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you're notified whenever I upload new videos. Big things for my friend, Ben. And you might be like, Remy, didn't you just do a video with Ben? Yes, I did. But this guy moves super fast, and this is a huge week for Ben. His first drop on the website is coming this week and I wanted to be there to document it. So let's go check it out. I heard uh, that you're gonna start selling anemones soon online. Oh yeah? So that like happened really fast. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I'm kind of weird like that. Are you ready for this? Uh, yeah, I guess. As ready as I'm ever gonna be. <laughs> Well, uh, I'm I'm leaving work right now. You mind if I stop by and see what's going on and maybe give people a little preview of what may be dropping soon? Sounds good. Yeah, I'm just dripping some clownfish. I actually just got in right now. If you aren't in the hobby, that sounds a little weird, but <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I'll be I'll I'll be over in like I don't know, probably an hour ish. Yeah, sounds good. All right, man. Well, I'll I'll see you in a little bit. All right. All right. See you, man kind of excited for him because he's purchased a ton of anemones I'm super impressed by how quickly everything has kind of come together for Ben I think it was just a couple episodes ago that we talked to Ben about uh, actually moving forward with an anemone farm and a small business so I'm pretty excited to see where he's going with this and just to see what's next so Ben what's up guys welcome back a bunch of stuff has changed. You are, you've launched a website, you're taking your anemones to the internet and you have plenty of selection. I kind of want to go through everything, but you said you had to feed some stuff. Yeah, let me uh, walk through it. Cause I got some fish in today. Just got done dripping them um, and they need to be fed. So yeah, the 125, I think the last time you guys saw it, it was kind of getting torn down and ready for this, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah. The, the time before that, the whole thing was Euphilia. Yeah, so there's not, I don't own one piece of Euphilia anymore, I don't believe. No, there's not in that tank. No, I don't own one piece anymore. It is all gone. Um, we have yeah. moved on to an entire anemone tank now. Yeah, this is complete nems and a lot of clownfish. <laughs> How many clownfish do you say or would be in here? Probably about the 30 to 35 range now because I added about six or seven today and just gotta go add the numbers back up. I think a lot of people talk about aggression when you have that many tanks or that many uh, clownfish in one tank. How do you kind of escape that? Um, first and foremost, if you're doing this for the first time, I highly recommend starting with a true harem clutch. So all from the same same batch, same mom and dad. Their sizes don't range in a bunch of different, so there's not gonna be that dominance right away. But something like this, I mean, once you get it down, you gotta feed a lot, four or five times a day. Definitely have some awesome filtration because you're gonna be feeding that much. And uh, it's really that uh, eyesight break. So any of that you can do, um, as many anemones as you can put in there. Um, the structure of your rock is really, really gonna dictate a lot too. Uh, trying to get rock with holes in it so clowns can go up in those holes. Um, when we go back around, I can give you kind of a, a better idea on what, what I'm talking about here. But these little guys came in today. I was shocked they shipped this well at this size too. They yeah. are tiny. Yeah, what are they? They're, they're lightning, uh, gold lightning maroons. So I guess that's gonna be I guess my, that's a perfect little harem, 11, you know? That's perfect, just like that. Same batch, same mom and dad, all the same size. Obviously I wouldn't do maroons in a harem, um, cause as you can see how small they are, they're going at each other already. Probably cause they're hungry and mad at me. It's like not only is there a bunch of arches in here for the break and everything, 
my rock's not laying one up against the wall so they have both sides of that rock yeah you don't get to see them you might have some nems go back there but it's better overall um then you'll see like in these rocks you'll see a bunch of a bunch of holes in my rock you know so they can get all the way up in there that's probably the first time i've heard eyesight break what do you mean by that you just mean like they they're able to break eyesight from each other Correct. So if you look at this Chicago, of course, they all want to be in that Chicago, but if they start going at it, the smaller or male of the clownfish in there, there's only really one female, but there's probably a couple females in this tank. But when they start going at it and start getting angry with each other, the bigger one will win the position. And as long as that smaller one can get away and way out of sight of that other clownfish while it's sitting in that anemone, you're good. So, I mean, you'll, if you watch these tanks long enough, you'll see it instantly happen. Uh, they just gotta get out of the way because that clownfish will follow them for a second. And so this, this tank is more of like the medium sized Correct. Uh, juvenile. So this is what I would recommend most people to start like a harem size with is more of these Da Vinci's, the, uh, the white, the whiter of the fish in here. Um, that's probably a great size to start. Uh, the tank size two is huge. Uh, at least a 60 gallon is what I recommend. And probably going with like 15 or 20 of these at a time. Um, and all at once. So it's, it's really, a, you gotta really plan this out. So are you gonna have harems available or is that something you're you're breeding for or? I don't wanna give too much up, but uh, <laughs> yeah. You may have already looked at uh, a harem that will be on the website on Friday. But yeah, uh, you'll just have to get there quick. <laughs> Uh, I guess we'll go to the NEM room. Yeah, I mean, the operation has expanded exponentially. Yes, yeah, so what I started to realize, you know, when you're in a project involved, sometimes you gotta step back and be like, hey, I'm getting blinded by everything that's going on right now. I need to, I need to really think about this a little more. So instead of doing that big clownfish rack that was right here that really cluttered this room up, this room became solely the NEM room. Um, so this is all the like, grow outs, what's gonna be for sale, what's getting propagated, um, what's gonna be available in the next coming weeks. This is kind of that lagoon. So these guys will be coming up eventually. Um, then I got some of my more higher end clownfish in the lagoon um, that might make it to the website. We'll, uh, we'll just have to see. I love those, uh, what are they, long fin mochas? Is that what they are? What's the... Oh, uh, these are the Black Storm Longfin. Black, Black Storm Storms. Longfin. That's like, it's like high end on top of high end. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're definitely pretty. And then there's the Longfin White Wyomies in there, which I don't even know if I've ever... I've seen those maybe like once or twice. Or so. Yeah. And it's weird because for Longfins, I'm not usually a huge fan, but I love those. Yeah. They're, they're just neat. They remind me... Long story short, I built the Koi Pond by hand, moved like three months later, but uh, they remind me of koi fish. I feel like they're like the koi fish of, the butterfly koi fish yeah. of saltwater tanks. That's cool. So, yeah, I keep breeding pears and sumps. <laughs> <laughs> Those are actually getting shipped out for somebody. So this is the next one. Another, the macro grow out with, gosh, 40 more clownfish in there probably, ready to go for a harem. That's a pretty basic system. Like, honestly, it's just a sump. All it is is an enclosed loop. So, nothing crazy there. This is the system that was in the other room that you moved into this uh, kitchen area here. Last video, we had a gentleman uh, comment uh, on that stand wasn't really great. And I agreed with him too, trust me. I had a little bit to build still on it, but uh, it just kind of sounded like he maybe was an engineer or carpenter. Uh, so I took the dude's advice because good criticism is, is good to take sometimes yeah. and went out and bought this rack and uh, took big old bolts into the walls and everything. It's, it's solid. Rotifers. Yeah, not all rotifers. There's oh. a new one in there. What's the new one? Is this the new one over here? Yeah, so those are all my copepods. Oh, is this who you're feeding them to? Yep, these are these are the newest addition. Well, besides the clownfish today, but uh, yeah, I've always wanted seahorses. I think they're one of the coolest things in the saltwater hobby, and especially after watching them. 
seahorses are something that I've always been interested in too. And the breeding of them, I know, isn't uh, terribly hard in the hobby to make happen. And the fact that the male gives birth, you know, I think that is something that a lot of women would exchange with a lot of men. I think they would. <laughs> I think they would. Or at least the pain experience. I think the main thing that is different is now that you're you're kind of ready to start rolling. You're kind of ready to, like, get out there and start selling these things. Yeah, so it's been a lot of work, but yeah, Friday's the big day. Um, For anybody that would think about doing a farm or any kind of business, I feel like for me personally, this is something that I've always like thought about doing and wanted to be involved with and to eventually do at some point. But like, you're it's it's not it's not easy. It's definitely not easy. <laughs> not that um, I expected it to be, but just like you think you've got all the equipment already, but once you take it up another level, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, it's kind of weird how it happens, you know. Uh, I used to be an electrician. I still technically am. Uh, but I took kind of a leave of absence to do this. Uh, I don't know, without getting mushy, had my grandfather pass away. He was 91. It was just awesome. That kind of sets you into reality. And then uh, having a close call as an electrician really uh, get your priorities straight. You're an inspiration to a lot of people in this hobby. And... Uh... I uh, I know that's hard to hear. It's just weird because like I'm I feel like I'm nobody, you know. I'm just some dude in the basement. Like I don't know. You're just, a dude weird. in a basement with a lot of clownfish. So yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like I, I just want to have fun and you know do this for a living and share this and get this out there and stop taking it from the ocean. Like, ugh, that bugs me, man. So that's what this is all about: aquaculture. That's why I can mix Chicago's with other stuff, you know, and I don't have issues. Bensdems.com, weekly drops for now, just to kind of get your feet yep. wet. Weekly drops for now. Uh, macroalgae will be coming soon. Good amount of nems on there and definitely some clownfish, maybe some long fins. Who knows? I'm getting asked a lot for them, so. I like it, dude. I'm, I'm excited for you. This is awesome. Thanks, man. Uh, congratulations, and I know it's been a lot of work, but uh, we'll all pay off I think hopefully that's uh that's the goal it's a lot of a lot of risk out there right now but yeah yeah passion man it's about so well thanks for letting me stop by yeah anytime man All right. have a good day buddy say bye 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 guys I gotta say it's a true inspiration to have a good reefing buddy in the area just going for it we all have ideas but how many of us actually start them I saw a meme the other day and it was like What's the difference between Amazon, Tesla, Apple, and that idea you have for a company in your head? They all started. I thought that was kind of cool because for me, uh, my good buddy Tyler or Inland underscore Reef would tell you that in the beginning, before this YouTube channel started, I had told him that I'd start a YouTube channel whenever I got the cardboard out of my windows. Well, good thing I didn't wait. I could go on and on, but if you've got a dream or something you've been wanting to do, just start it, just do it, just try, because otherwise you're just thinking about it. I realize this is kind of a timely statement and may not age well if you're viewing this in the future, but tomorrow is the first drop of products, anemones, clownfish, maybe some macro algae as well at bensnems.com. I'm excited for them, and you know that I'm going to be documenting this entire process along the way. So if you liked today's video, maybe it inspired you, uh, maybe you got some tips on care for anemones or harem tanks, go ahead and like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. You wanna talk about starting, Scott Crow doesn't know how to stop starting. Did you see this? Now he has an entire warehouse for aquariums. This man does not stop. He eats, sleeps, and breathes aquariums, fresh water, and salt water. And I look up to this guy a lot. I think he's doing great things in the hobby. If you haven't checked out their new videos, they are posting much more regularly on YouTube, two, three videos a week sometimes. So make sure to go subscribe to the OSA channel as well. In the next video, which should be coming very soon, I'm gonna be prepping for the frag swap. It'll be the last prep video before 
the actual frag swap results video. So you're gonna wanna be here for that. I've got racks ready to go. This tank needs to be cleaned up. We've got toad stools all mounted and ready to go. So we just need to load up the racks and I'll show you how I do that coming up in the next video. So be here for that. The clownfish have not spawned yet. However, I do have a plan for this area after the frag swap. So I may plumb in a couple of 10 gallon tanks to house a couple more pairs of clownfish just so I can kickstart that. A couple of proven pairs that have spawned in the past. I'm hoping that maybe isolating them into one tank will work better than just having them in a reef tank with a bunch of coral and a bunch of stuff going on around them. Now, if they just spawn, we wouldn't have any of these issues. Just throwing that out there. But uh, I've got good friends here. Stay safe and I will see you in the next one.